All right. So one of the benefits of, of using meta tiles is, uh, really this screen is broken up into eight by eight tiles instead. Of, and these meta tiles are 16 by 16. But think if the if the program had to keep track of all of these tiles, uh, eight by eight, it would be four times the, twice the number this way and twice the number for each row, it'd be four times the number of tiles to draw a screen, the number of values that it had to, to have in memory to know which which images to draw in each space. Um, well, we decided that it was totally worth it to have, you know, to get four times the amount of screens. Um, but sometimes we want that little bit of extra detail and, and things like that. Um, and so we're going to look at what we did to solve that problem. And I say solve in quotes. Uh, it works really well for uh, Mystic Searches and Mystic Origins, these top-down adventure games, which is why we did it. Uh, also, Austin found it was really helpful when he was designing screens for Trollburner. He did this, and that was a platform game. So I'm thinking that it's going to be helpful for a lot of people. Eventually, we'll probably have a way to turn on and off paths. We're going to talk about paths. And also we're going to talk about screen specific tiles. And there's nothing inherently special about screen specific tiles, but I'm going to show you why we might want to use screen specific tiles. Um, if I go to, let's see, I'm going to, I'm going to make a screen specific tile set. Uh, I'm going to go to pixel editor and I'm going to open uh, beta assets. I'm going to get the skull. So I'm going to go to graphics and I'm gonna open tiles and square it off. And I want to get this skull right here. Uh, I guess I could conform it first. Uh, so not worried about any other tiles. I'm literally, literally just looking at this. So if this accidentally changes one of these, don't forget, I've already got that saved. I'm not, do, I'm not overwriting that right now at all. Um, this is the original file. As long as I don't save this, uh, then I'm okay. I'm going to copy it and paste it into a tile set. Um, so I'm not going to change my overworld palettes, you know, make sure, uh, I have a dummy palette loaded. If I want to, if I want to see what this looks like, I don't even necessarily need to, I could do it with uh, BRGB and know that I want ground to be this color and I want highlight and I want shadow. There we go. So uh, I'm going to, you know what? I, I did use the skull on, on my, on my tile set. That's okay. Um, I'm going to copy it. No, scrap that. I'm going to use the spikes because I don't have the spikes on either tile set. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that the spikes can be either on the dungeon or on the overworld without, um, without, yeah, let me open that again. Uh, without having to duplicate them onto both tile sets. So I'm sorry. Let me try that again. This also has too many colors. If you look, it's it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Too many colors by far. So I'm going to make sure I've got my dummy palette loaded in. And I'm just going to make this gray and dark gray and the ground color. I know my ground color is going to be this. And I, I'm not worried about any of these. Just this tile, right? just this right here. I know that my... I'm going to look at it. I know that my highlight color, which I'm going to make all that, is that. And I know my shadow color is going to be green. So I'm going to copy that now. Control C. And I'm going to go to Pixel Editor, New Screen Tile Set. And notice this is a lot narrower than the, uh, than the, the main tile set. It's only one, if I look, it's only one uh, tile high, one meta tile high. I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to save this over the top of a screen tile set, which is like this guy right here. Background start st screen specific CHR00. I'm going to save and replace it. Okay. And what I just allowed myself to do, if I go to my overworld, I can load in a main tile set. Yeah. And see, I closed and opened this again and it didn't save my, my label. So we're going to have to make sure that that preserves over saves. Um, this is my grassland. This is my dungeon, right? Um, I have loaded a screen tile set now too. Now here's what's cool. Um, I'm going to go through and I'm going to real quickly make assets for my dungeon. So I'm going to select tile set zero. Um, I'm also going to, make a new palette 
kind of jumping around a little bit. Add a palette group, and I'm going to call this palette group Dungeon Pals. Now, I don't need to make a new palette group for each type, for each palette that I do. Um, I'm just, I'm, this would be for my overworlds, this would be for my underworlds, um, you know, or however I want to uh, put them together. I'm going to call this one Dungeon Pal 1. Right click, add, assign to group Dungeon Palettes. And now inside there, there's in Dungeon Palettes. If I go to Assets, I'm not going to use the first tile set. I'm going to use the second tile set. I'm not going to use Overworld Palettes. I'm going to use Dungeon Palettes, and I'm going to use Dungeon Palette 1. Right now, it's all gray. Well, let me fix that. Um, I think my ground was like a like one of these purples, and then my skull was light gray and dark gray, or white and light gray like that yeah i like that right there okay um so now uh i want to make new assets for my dungeon and i might call this like dungeon ground give it a unique name from anything that's over here so i'm not just gonna call it the same thing uh make it walkable save it brick wall i'm gonna make solid dungeon dung <laughs> dung wall save it and also the skull, dungeon skull, and save that. All right, so now if I was creating a screen, uh, this is an example of a overworld screen, and I'm just gonna double click on this, and I'm still using bank one, but instead of using uh, tile set one, I'm gonna use, or tile set zero, I'm gonna use tile set one. And instead of using uh, overworld palettes, I'm gonna use dungeon palettes and dungeon palette zero. Now, um, I can create with this and I can go ahead and I can put these tiles in here. Okay. And you'll notice that when I'm on a screen that uses tile set zero, um, I get only the assets that are on tile set zero. When I, when I select tile set one, I only have access to the assets that I made with tile set one. Um, by the way, I can go back and forth between map screens by hitting left and right and up and down on the keyboard. So that's a really quick way I can cycle through. And if you haven't noticed, I can actually see the, the, set, the ghosted image of the screen next to me. So if I wanted to line up collisions to make sure that I don't walk into a solid object, I could do that. Um, all right, so what happens when I have spikes that I want both on the overworld and in the dungeon. Uh, that's what the screen specific tile set is for. So where it says main tiles, I'm going to click on that and go to screen tiles. And I'm going to pick the spikes. Now, if I'm on the overworld, it's using this palette here. And if I'm in the underworld, uh, it looks like dungeon, it looks like this dungeon looks okay like that. I don't mind that overworld. Maybe I want uh, to assign some, uh, to this this uh this third sub palette here and i'll make the ground the same color ground um and i'll make this gray and white and there now i could tell that spikes or i kind of liked it better like this gray and dark gray like that okay that looks like stone spike okay and i'm gonna make this death which I, if i run into it i die now i haven't told it what that means yet or anything like that but um i'm gonna call this uh spikes I'm going to save it. And now it's going to use the third sub palette. So if I go over to my dungeon, what's on the third sub palette? I don't know. So I'll have to put what I want here, which I'll put the ground color, oops, ground color. And it was light gray and dark gray. Now it kind of will resemble that. And it'll use, even though it's green over here, um, it'll use the third sub palette. So if, if, uh, if I have the the uh, underworld the the dungeon palettes loaded, it'll use the colors that are there. Okay, what what does that do for me? Well, now if I look, if I have screen specific tile zero loaded, I get my spikes on either screen. So I can mix and match these screen tile sets with tile sets. So I can put spikes here, or I could put spikes here. Um, and it's conforming to this third sub palette as far as the color. Uh, 
and you can see how useful that would be. I, a perfect example that I always use is like a grave, uh, gravestones. Um, if I wanted to have graves in a graveyard, but I also wanted like one stray grave in the desert, and I also wanted one gravestone in the overworld where you know the wise old mystic lived, I don't want to have to use up the very, very, very precious tile set space to to make a you know duplicate tile. That seems just wasteful. So instead, I can put it on the uh, screen specific tile set and you know use that uh, across multiple uh, tiles so I can make like a graves uh, screen specific and then any screen that I want graves on within that bank I can load that, that so this is tile set zero I could load so anywhere I want spikes instead of having to put spikes on the tile set I could just make sure that tiles uh, screen tile set zero is loaded and then I can have access to the spikes so that's screen specific tile sets there's one more type of tiles uh, that's that's even more fun and a little bit more complicated and that's paths paths help us get back a little bit of that eight by eight detail sort of um and the, it's actually really fun to create with paths if you guys have used rpg maker or anything like that you're probably familiar with how this works we have an auto pathing system for anything that's in paths the hardest part to understand is how to visualize paths i'm going to show you how to set up paths right now okay um in our pixel editor uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm on dummy palette and I'm going to open up one thing that I put in your beta assets is there it is. It's a PNG file. I'm sorry. It is in there. It's a PNG file and you can open this file uh, in the graphics editor. I'm not sure if all PNGs will open. You'll have to check that out yourself, but I know this one will. So I'm going to open it. And what am I looking at here? What I'm looking at is basically how the paths work how they should be shaped so uh this this is a top left corner of a path this is a set these two tiles here are the top center of a path this is the top right corner this is the left of the path right of the path this is the bottom of a path this is these are the interior corners like if i had a tile that that moved like this it would use the interior corner it would automatically fill that and i gave this to you guys as a template i need to conform this first of all if i want to use it so uh what i want is uh let's see i want white to be the ground color and this to be the path if you can imagine everything you see that's white would be grass and this would be like the dirt path or the pond or whatever so uh i'm going to they're all bad pixels i'm going to if you remember i use blue this third value for ground and uh, I'm going to use my standard highlight color huh, or the shadow color it doesn't really matter I'm using a standard highlight color for black um, and I might have to tweak this in in once I'm actually building a path you'll you'll see what I mean all right so this is a path now it's ready to go if I wanted to look at it through what it might look like on my screen it might look something like th th this might look something like this um, I can't remember what other color I had over there, brown and was it light green? Yeah, like, oh, it was light green and brown, like that. Um, so this would look something like this. Uh, and really what I want is something more like this, um, where the path color is loaded there, the ground color is loaded here, and... Yeah, whatever colors. So you can you can see right here how that kind of looks like uh, that would be like the dirt path up against the grass. Um, and so that it works well with my palette, I'm going to make that work. So I'm going to make the brown color be the color that that I'm pathing with in order to do that. Um, I'm going to make usually this is how I would set it up. But for this, I want it to go with the brown color. The brown color is green. So. OK, so now. It'll look like that and it'll back up against my the other alternative is I could have made another sub palette, but I think I'm using all three of them already on my overworld. So this is a single path and you can have four paths loaded per screen and you can have, I believe, 10 paths loaded per bank or eight paths, eight paths loaded per bank. Um, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go to new path group and this is all. Oh, it is 10. OK, all 10 possible paths in that path group. I'm going to go to the top corner, control V. And now I could actually add more types of paths. This is a template. Um, you're, you could make this dirt paths, water, railroad tracks, uh, cobblestones, 
door entryways. Like there's so many things that you could do. And the only way that I could, the only way that I could really explain how it works is for you to start playing with it. I'm going to save this as graphic assets, path tiles, zero, zero. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my gra my graphics bank one path info. And there's my path right there. It's a little phallic right now. I've got to make, I've got to edit this a little bit. This is showing me what it would, what this path would look like in my overworld palettes using this sub palette right here. This is what it would look like using this sub palette. This is what it would look like using this sub palette. Here's what it would look like using my dungeon sub palettes, right? Okay. So I want this to be for my overworld. And this is just reference. Don't forget. It's really going to be determined by my screen, but this will make it easier to edit. I want to tweak this so that it looks like a walking path. So I'm going to edit. Let's see, this tile needs to come up at the edge right here. So I'm going to edit this. And this is a simple uh, version that's meant for spot checking of our editor. I'm going to make this kind of come up like this. And oops, do that here. And save the modified tile. It's been saved. When I close it, you can see, okay, now it's come up. I want this to be less square. So I'm going to edit that, get the color I want, and just click and drag. I can also, like, dot the edges a little bit, you know. Um, make it just a little less uh, squared off. You can kind of see the changes I'm making here. Um, definitely make this less phallic here. Um, so get yellow. Green. And I need this to kind of come up and meet. I need this to, let's do this one first. I need this to come down to meet. And I need this to let's unsquare that. And I'm just slowly constructing something that looks kind of neat for like a dirt path and you might not be making a dirt path so yours might look completely different than this um i'm gonna have this come up to meet it let's see this has got to come up pretty far like this and let's round this edge off a little bit and that that kind of works i mean that's yeah that, that that's okay i i'd like i'd like this to maybe tame a little bit like this and I can go through and I could do all kinds of stuff with this and make this look a little bit more like a, like a dirt path uh, edging, but this is, that's not bad. That's a quick, easy way to do this. Um, I want this to be walkable this path. I could also make it like, let's say I made a brick wall out of paths. I can make it solid. Uh, I made a wall of spikes. I can make it a death wall, um, that auto path, you know, whatever. Um, I'm going to make this walkable. Oops walkable. It's just a dirt path that I can walk on. I'm going to call this dirt path and save it. Dearth, not dearth, dirt path, save it. Okay. So now, um, if I go to my overworld and I go to my main screen here and I go to screen info, a lot of this is to be ignored. So stick with me on this just because you click something doesn't mean it does a thing. So, uh, one thing that does operate for sure is path group and I'm going to select dirt path. Hit okay. I want dirt path to be in this room. Now, if I hold the one key down and drag my mouse, it automatically creates a path. And you can see just how much more detail that gives the screen. And I could get a lot better with that graphic and make that a lot more se more seamless than, you know, having it look so redundant like that. And that's just a matter of editing it to my taste or even editing it in Photoshop and things like that. Um, and if I wanted to show that I, I want to go off the screen this way, great. And when I play the game, it'll auto path those tiles like that. So those are two other forms of tiles that uh, you can use to create your screens. We've got your, your full on uh, uh, tile set, your screen specific tile set, and then your path group.